I've been making the argument for a while, and also I think to the detriment of my ability to prognosticate that the inflation that we have experienced is not a function of demand. Generally, when we talk about inflation, we talk about an overheated economy where demand outstrips our capacity to produce. There's too much money floating around in people's hands. They want to buy too many goods. It's driving the prices of goods up. And in that instance, when there's too much money out there, there's really two ways in which you can pump the brakes on that. One is a fiscal uh, response and one is a monetary response. The fiscal response is raise taxes. Pull money out of the hands of people, put it into the government, redeploy that, that money, or just, you know, if you send in cash to the IRS, they just burn it. Redeploy that money maybe into areas where it is, you know, unimpacted by uh, all that other money that's out there some type of public infrastructure or other areas that you know maybe are not necessarily on a run or fi uh, or monetarily wherein you encourage the supposed independent central bank in this country which is the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates in other words making it uh, harder for people to borrow money or more expensive for people to borrow money. That's the way you address inflation that is a function of overheated demand. We don't have a word for inflation that is a function of supply problems. Like right now in Florida, there is no doubt in my mind there are products that have jumped up in price. I don't know if that's going to be gas. I don't know if that's going to be like bottled water. I don't know if that's going to be lumber. Uh, I, there's just no doubt, right? Because supply has been greatly diminished. Demand may have increased for some things, but not necessarily dramatically. It's just that like supply in certain areas is just gone. And maybe they can't get supplies to certain areas because a bridge is washed out. That makes supplies expensive. <laughs> that it makes supplies sense. expensive because you have a logistics problem. You maybe you have a warehouse that got destroyed and all the products in that warehouse are destroyed. That's what happened with COVID. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development has basically asked, this is the United Nations, that the Federal Reserve and other central banks stop raising their interest rates to deal with inflation because they are pushing the global economy into a recession. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, according to the Wall Street Journal, said the Fed risked causing significant harm to developing countries if it persists with rapid rate rises. It also is going to cause significant harm to this country in terms of a recession. But the problem is even that much more debilitating for uh, developing countries who look to rich countries like ours to get the capital to build things like infrastructure and to do business development. The agency estimated that a percentage point rise in the Fed's key interest rate lowers economic output in other rich countries by 0.5% and economic output in poor countries by 0.8% over the subsequent three years. There's still time to step back from the edge of recession, says um, 
United Nations Conference on Trade and Development Secretary General Rebecca Grinspan. We have the tools to calm inflation and support all vulnerable groups, but the current course of action is hurting the most vulnerable, especially in developing countries, and risks tipping the world into global recession. As you know, the Fed has uh, lifted their uh, federal funds rate by three quarters of a percentage point, which is the fifth consecutive rise this year, ostensibly to battle U.S. inflation. But this is a very, very poor tool when the problem is not outstrip demand, or I should say outstrip supply because of, uh, of an increased demand, but rather a supply that's been inhibited. UNCTAD said rather than increase rates, which will do little to ease shortages of energy and food, Policymakers should focus on measures that target price spikes directly, including price caps funded by one-off taxes on the unusually large profits being made by many major energy companies. You understand what they're saying here? And if you look at like what is really go where, where it is, the prices that are that have really increased. And I saw a graph of this recently. The prices that have really increased are with uh, goods that are necessities, where basically there was no other option. This is what you're going to get. You need to buy it from here, otherwise you got nothing. This is what Richard uh, Colesright, head of the team in charge of the report, said in an interview. Do you try to su solve supply-side problem with a demand-side solution? We think that's a very dangerous approach. I, I would argue that curbing inflation is really a a secondary uh, function of what the Fed is doing right now. I got into an argument with somebody when I was up in Worcester, some really wealthy dude, who uh, apparently, and I don't know the whole deal on this, I don't know this guy well at all, I just happened to meet him at, at actually the Red Sox game, at the Worcester Red Sox game. And... Uh, he, he claimed he had some affiliation maybe with the New England Fed. I don't know. But he said, the Fed has a dual mandate. They have to uh, um, create jobs or, or get to as low unemployment as possible and also keep inflation in check. He was basically like talking to me like I didn't know what I was talking about. And I'm like, yes, no, I'm aware of that. And I said, but they're, they're, they're disciplining uh, labor. And he goes, they really care about unemployment. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But the part that they don't have a mandate on that they're really working on is wages. And he goes, yeah, well, those are really locked in. And I'm like, yeah, but they're trying to prevent it from getting, giving the uh, labor too much power. And so it's not just a question of like, when they say they want to keep unemployment rate, and there, there was, a, the, for a long time, we were told in this country, and, I, and, and, and it was as recently as 15 years ago, I'm convinced of it, maybe it was even 10, that the unemployment rate could not, and, it, and if you took an economics course 20 years ago, you were told the unemployment rate cannot go below 4% without disaster happening. Maybe it was even 6%, 5%. But they would never say exactly what the disaster was. The disaster turns out to be workers become empowered, they start striking, they demand higher wages, they enter into the marketplace with not as disadvantaged as capital. And that's what they're worried about. That's what they're concerned about. 
That's why we talked about yesterday, all this anxiety about um, not being able to get workers to return to the office or quiet quitting, and in addition to all the unionization stuff we see. This is the Fed disciplining labor. Make no mistake about it. UNCTAD noted that a July agreement between Russia and Ukraine enabling more than a million tons of grain trapped in Ukrainian silos to be exported via the Black Sea had helped lower world cereal prices by 1.4%. We are experiencing a supply inhibition, not an increase in demand. There may be some things that are a little bit mismatched still coming out of COVID, but less and less. So if inflation was a real problem in this country, the way to address it would be for our elected officials to impose price controls in areas where it was out of hand and to argue to the American public, we need price controls here because they're making such huge profits. This is price gouging. This is the bodega looking around and saying, oh my God, there's been a hurricane here. I'm the only bodega that has bottles of water. It doesn't cost me any more to have these bottles of water, they're already here. Now the bodega owner may say like, but it's gonna cost me more to get, you know, cereal or other products. So I'm gonna jack up the price on my water. And then at the end of the month, he finds out like, well, it turns out like I jacked up the price maybe a buck or two more than I needed to. And um, my the inhibition on my profits, I thought that was gonna come from having to pay for more for cereal or whatever it is because the uh, trucks are gonna get here slow. Uh, I may have overestimated. And congratulations to me, because I, I rose the, 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 the price of water up. I, I, I've had a banner month. That's what we're seeing in the energy sector. That's what we're seeing in the housing sector. Rents going through the roof. And, this, and, and if you're worried about inflation on rents, the last thing you wanna do is kill the housing market, which is being done right now. This is an article in The Intercept uh, by John Swartz and Ken Klippenstein. The CEO says he's been praying for inflation because it's an excuse to jack up prices. The CEO of Iron Mountain Inc., which is a data uh, processing firm, uh, told Wall Street analysts at a September 20th investor event that the high levels of inflation of the past several years had helped the company increase its margins and that, doing, and that for that reason he had long been doing my inflation dance praying for inflation. So. Yep. Between the 101 and the 5 reminds me the last president who did price controls? Nixon. Richard Nixon. Yep. Republican. As, uh, and also, Cory Robin would say the last president under the New Deal consensus. Yep. We're all Keynesians now, and then we weren't.